organicseduction.com. So, the next thing I'll talk about is the foundations of inner game, like the basics of inner game. The first thing is um, thinking about when you actually walk up to a girl in a bar and you first talk to her and think, what are you thinking? And that's really like where the battlefield of inner game is. If you walk up and think, she's going to reject me, she's going to reject me, she's going to reject me, that projects it and creates the environment. If you walk up to a girl and think, she's so lucky I'm even talking to her, she'll vibe off that and she'll react to it. And so it kind of depends what we actually want to get. And it's a lot about, inner game comes down to just feeling comfortable with yourself. As much as it is, like as your inner game gets better, like a lot of guys wonder, why do women like assholes? Biggest question. Every guy gets in the game, women only like assholes, they never like me. Assholes are confident. Confident is the most attractive trait a man can have, bar none. Like, there's nothing more powerful. No matter what any other guy says, if you just feel really, whoever's more confident, that's why like, when two guys interact in a bar and are fighting over a girl, whoever's just more comfortable with himself and more confident will win. And that's why, like, I don't get into fights in bars. I don't have any problems. I'm very comfortable with myself. You know, if I get rejected by a girl, I don't really remember it. Because it doesn't matter to me. I know who I am. And so the first thing you kind of want to do is think, okay, who am I and who is she? You interact. And kind of... As we get into more advanced stuff, we'll think about how she feels about herself. We'll, we'll determine how she reacts to your level approach. But the first thing I teach every guy, and I think this is really important, is to say, okay, I'm going to talk to this girl. She's got 15 minutes to convince me that she's cool. No matter how beautiful she is, no matter how whatever. I've met some of the beautiful girls I've met are the most boring girls. Really? And as you get better and better game, more comfortable with yourself, more comfortable approaching, you suddenly start thinking, okay, these are the things that matter to me. If a girl's boring, I can't sleep with a boring girl. I've been in bed with girls before and been incapable of getting an erection because I don't like them. Their personality is too boring. So for me, looks are just through the gate. And I'll say that to you, I'm like, you know, you're beautiful and that's awesome. That get, I'll talk to you for that. But what else do you have going on? What makes you amazing? I believe that every single person has something about them that makes them beautiful. And I look for that. I mine for it. You know, I met this girl um, in a really high-end VIP club in London. You know, and I was, she was stunning. And I was like, you know, what do you do? No way, what do you love to do? Which is one of my standard lines for finding out about someone. She was like, well, I'm a stripper. And I'm like, please don't talk about work. Work is so boring. She goes, no, being a stripper is really cool. And I was like, it's not, it's really boring to me. And she goes, oh, well, actually I'm a painter on the side. I painted 30 paintings. I'm trying to get my first gallery exhibition. So we talked about that for 20 minutes. Most guys would have never gotten past stripper. They would have had the normal conversation she has with everyone. And they wouldn't gotten into it at all. Because they get because guys hear stripper and they immediately have a sexual reaction. And girls, she's like, oh, this guy's just a client. She goes into business mode. Uh, breaking through that, you can get a connection, you know, and I got her number and kind of hung out and was really cool. And other people say, like, wow, that girl's so hot. And it's like I'm looking for the specialness. So if you just think of beauty, instead of thinking beauty as if she's beautiful, I'll sleep with her. Think of beauty as a prerequisite for her to get an interview with me. Like a lot of older school game, like old school mystery method and a lot of the other school systems. Like everyone always talks about nags, whatever, but the idea is that she's here, I'm here. I've got to raise myself and lower her until we're even. And you can either do, you can either totally lower her, totally raise yourself, or do a little of both. And that's just all the result of bad inner game. I don't think any woman is better than me. I don't think anyone is better than me. I think, you know, we all have different ways of judging ourselves. If you, some people think all that matters is money. Some people think, oh, about his name. So they meet someone who's more famous, they're better. They think, okay, this guy's better than me because he's famous. I've met people when I didn't know they were famous, and I've met people who I knew they were famous beforehand, and I reacted differently. Because we react to those things. It's learning to control those reactions that makes our inner game more and more powerful. Like, I'm very comfortable around people. Even if someone's really famous, it only takes me about five minutes to climatize, if that. And so that's what's powerful. It's like, okay, I know who I am, and I don't need anything from other people. I'm friends with several billionaires, okay? I, I'm not very rich, you can live around my apartment, I live okay, okay? I don't need them to give me money, which is, I don't need them to give me jobs. That's why I'm friends with them, I don't need anything from them. Because they're always surrounded by people asking them for stuff. What happens to people who win the lottery? They end up freaking out and hiding from all their friends because everyone keeps asking them for money. Yeah. People don't want that. People want to, you to give them stuff and give them value, and that's kind of, Knowing who you are is what builds that, being comfortable with who you are. You know, a lot of people come into this thinking, okay, 
I'm a fuck up, but getting the right girl will fix me. That's not gonna work. Women, a woman can't fix your problems. It's like he says in Fight Club. He's like, we're a generation of men raised by women, we're surrounded by sisters, single mothers, who think the answer to my problems is really another woman. And it's not, you have to, having women in your life is amazing. Women are beautiful, I've got three sisters, a mom, two nieces, I'm surrounded in my life by women. I think women are amazing and beautiful, but I don't need a woman to fix me. You gotta be fine with that. Exactly, if I'm one with myself, I love to bring a woman to my life and make her life better, and when we're together, our lives are better, and that's awesome, and having that connection and the beauty of all, but I don't come to her with a problem and say, fix my problem. The reason most relationships fail, and the reason I think gang learning relationships are so important is most people, they go to